Hello everybody, it is Joe Granado. Welcome to the brand new Nestmaker 4.1.0 tutorials. These specific tutorials are going to show off how to start creating with the base modules the easy way. All right, let's bend this scrolling engine to make some sort of scrolling shooter now. So let's open up Nestmaker 4.1.0. And we'll do the same thing that we've done. We'll go to new. We'll make uh, create blank tile sets. We're going to call this simple shooter and we're going to choose the simple shooter module hit okay now what that did was it loaded in all the scripts that are necessary for a simple shooter but i want you to keep this in mind if your ultimate goal is i want to make a shooter game with nest maker this is only a starting point this is not the shooter module this is barely even a shooter module this is a base set of code that does all the things that we've looked at so far platforming and, and adventure gaming and has tons of checks for physics and things like that a shooter game wouldn't want any of that stuff because a shooter is supposed to be super fast paced and a lot of things happening on the screen and all the things that this module can do slow down the game so there's very little you can have going on in this module's shooter engine without slowing down the game but you could still be creative and make a fun shooter anyway Anyway, uh, we're going to do this really quick. Uh, I'm going to go into, uh, first I'm going to load the graphics. So, sorry, I'm going to go to tile sets, import. Yes, I want to overwrite all of them. Thank you, dummy check. I want to go to my tutorial assets, tutorials, and I'm going to go to simple shooter and I'm going to bring in the tile sets. And just to make sure that that loaded, I'm going to look in, I'm going to open. Yep, they're there. Awesome. So now I'm going to bring in my assets import all assets simple shooter assets great now i'm going to go to my palettes right click on all palettes import simple shooter palettes then i'm going to go to monster palettes right click import simple shooter object palettes then i'm going to import my control my control scheme input linker import input links my these are the controls for this shooter then I'm going to go through and I'm going to import my monsters. I'm going to go to monster, import all monsters, simple shooter monsters. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to import my objects. And there's not many for this game. So I'm going to import game objects 0, 1, 2, and 8. 0, 1, 2, and eight which is effect zero awesome so now i've got a player his lasers a monster projectile and player death when i run into something that i should um i'm going to just add a score for this so i'm going to go to my huds and bo hud boxes i'm going to use sprite zero detection 127 is my sprite that i'm using h black time is one uh, 246 or so 30 or so and that puts my sprite right here on the edge and collides with it um, I showed you in the last tutorial you could nudge this a little to hide it a little bit behind um, I, I like seeing it right now uh, as I'm testing to make sure that you know if there's a problem that's not the problem the sprite zero is being drawn that kind of thing uh, I'm going to draw a score which is my third asset here um, use number max value of eight and put this down and maybe again write the word score so element one will be just text and we'll say score and i'll move that into place like that awesome so now i've got my score i've got my hud set up i can now just pick an arbitrary starting screen there we go like that and uh, i'm going to put the the sky top along the top and that just kind of gives it a cool cool look it's not going to parallax or anything like that but at least that looks kind of cool um now i'm going to put the ground here and i'm going to put this sort of ground surface on top of that and place my player here uh and you know i could put some things to avoid like these I believe these are in instant deaths. So if I run into these, you know, I crash basically. Um, maybe I'll put a couple of those. I'm going to select that by holding shift, control C, and paste that right there. Um, 
So I, I don't really know what these are. They're just floating masses in space here. But you get the idea. Um, now I'm going to copy this. Control C. Uh, actually, let me set the screen up first. I'm sorry. I'm going to do screen info. We want this screen to scroll to the right. Also, we want it to auto scroll. And also, we want the edge to stop the player. So we are going to scroll right. It's, go it's going to read this bit to know that it's scrolling without me even moving. It's going to move on its own. And I'm going to be able to move within that moving frame. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at that. And I also am going to set up a second screen. Um, make sure that, that took. It did. Okay. I'm also going to set up a second screen so I have somewhere to scroll to. So I'm going to control C, control V. So now that one has scrolling all set up. And I'm going to get rid of these. And maybe I'll put you know, a bigger one here in the middle. So I could definitely tell I'm on a, on a new screen here. There we go. So I'll scroll from here to here. Uh, and auto scrolling should be set up on that screen. I also do want to do the, um, the sub palette here at the top. It's going to change color uh, when I start scrolling, but that's okay. Um, so now I've got this auto scrolling game and Bam, died. Uh, so awesome. We're already, I mean, we are f basically five minutes into this thing and we're already there. Let me uh, make this all, and I don't even notice change, but let me do that. I'm holding down four and making sure that the sub palette is four for my top screen here, top of my screen where the HUD is going to be. There we go. It won't matter because any of these uses white, but it's just good to do. You can see white is in this fourth color. That's what that's the color that the text is actually drawing with. Um, so let's throw in some monsters into this third screen. Uh, I'm gonna control C, control V. Now this this engine does not like a lot of objects on the screen. To do this scrolling takes a lot of resources. So um, I'm going to go to my monsters. And I've got this UFO right here. And I'm going to use that UFO in all these places. And I'm going to call this UFOs, save. And I'm going to, on this screen, set these to be UFOs. And use, I actually kind of like that one. Um, there we go. Um, I'm going to put two monsters on the screen. Place one monster. Now this moves so fast that it's okay that there's not a lot of monsters that could be on the screen at the same the same time. Um, now these guys I should be able to shoot. Now my bullets uh, also have a limited range. They run out as soon as they're they're done uh, with the, with the first timer. And the reason that in this engine they have a limited range is because. Again, only so many objects can be on the screen at a time. Now, if I was really making a serious shooter, what I would do is I would lessen the amount of reads that those objects have to do, like and make a special class of objects that don't do all the things that all objects do. They just check to see if they're running into a monster. That's all they do. And if they're, check, if they're running into a monster, then they hurt the monster. That's all it would do. But right now, those are still objects like all the other objects, and they do all the things that all the other objects do. So, um, you know, that's... That's sort of the the trade off of doing these these mod this module these engines that that can do everything they can do everything um, and do nothing the best way that they can because they cannot possibly be the most efficient because they have to do all the things. Um, so anyway, again, think about this as a starting place to make a shooter. Uh, we'll take a look, and you could you should be able to see my little green uh, laser beams coming out, and I should be able to take care of those aliens. Let's see, little green now again coming from the wrong spot, right? Um, so we got two things wrong. One, my lasers are coming from above my ship, and two, these are the wrong color. Well, we know how to fix both of those problems. One, we know how to fix their color, because even though we set their color on their screen, we need to set their color on the loading screen, the screen that they actually load from uh, load on. Now, I can't remember. I didn't name these, so um, let me see which... Let's see. Uh, if I look at my screen info, it was Monster Palette 2. Okay, so I need to make sure on my loading screen, that's the one that I first load, uh, I have Monster Palette 2 selected. And now that will lock in and that, that'll that load, that palette will load, and while I'm scrolling when it gets here, it'll see those. And now I'm going to go to Game Objects, and I really... 
only have to worry about right because that's the only way I can face. Um, so this is 24. And maybe it won't quite be 24. Um, and this won't quite be 16. You know, maybe this starts from like right there. And this would be, this is transparent. So it'd actually be behind the ship. It'll look like this is coming from the left wing and this is coming from the right wing. Maybe a little bit higher like that. Okay. So let's try that out. Much better. Awesome. Okay, so let's make a sort of uh, boss for this. Um, this is kind of a really cool feature. I'm going to make another room like this one. Except I'm going to reset all placements. Uh, and I'm going to use my awesome monster here. Um, He's going to use all of the last tile set here. So I'm going to use my R key to paint over most of this guy. And then I'm going to use I'm going to use my E key to match that. So now um, most of them is using this, but the corners are using this one. Yeah, so so now he kind of looks like he's entrenched in that green goo here, this alien. And I'm going to make a little... Uh, he's in sort of a fortified area. Maybe this would take me inside the monster, you know, the alien base or whatever. Um, and I don't want to run into these because if I run into these, these are single death hit things. Now, you'll notice the front of the cage is missing here, the front of his tank, and that's actually going to be the object that I'm shooting at. That's going to be the actual monster. So I'm going to go to monsters. Uh, I'm going to go to monsters. Make a monster group. And the monster group is going to use boss front. And I'm not even going to fill the rest. I could fill the rest, uh, but I'm not even going to bother. I usually do just being kind of lazy right now. So I'm going to make boss front. Now, the only thing that's kind of a pain is it's going to be hard to line this up right. So uh, I'm going to go to screen info. Day monster is going to be boss front, and I need him to be, uh, let's see. He's using this second sub palette here. So I need him to be not that one. Not that one. Actually, no, nope, not that one. That one. So that's the that's the boss sub palette. So it's monster palette four right here. And the only problem is I need to line him up. This is where his feet would be. This is where his top would be, right? And it might take a try or two to get it in the right spot. Go ahead and right click at the top where you want his top sprites to be and place him right there. And that should put him in the right spot. Um, it doesn't look right here, but it'll look right when we get to the game. Now, the other cool thing is this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so you have to defeat this boss in order to move forward. This is a boss and a shooter. So I want the screen to sort of stop and allow me to fight this guy. It's really easy to do. I'm going to go to screen info. And here I'm going to click monsters unlock scroll. So everything's still the same except monsters are going to unlock the scroll. The scroll is inactive until all the monsters on the screen are defeated. And in this case, there's just the one. It's just the front of this, this object. And once I've defeated all the monsters, then the scroll will resume as normal. So it's kind of like a pause on the scroll. And just to, uh, I'm going to take this screen and copy it and put it after that screen. So when I defeat him, oops, this screen, there we go. So when I defeat him, he'll start scrolling and he'll scroll into this one and there'll be monsters on it and etc. Um, now, remember, uh, my palettes load on this screen where I load. So if I want to have that boss palette here on that screen when I get there, I need to load it here. Uh, so now by the time I, this, it'll load when the game loads. And then when I get here, it'll be that second palette will be that loaded here. Um, now these should go away. I don't know if I set these to the right go away tile. I'll have to check, but uh, let's, let's, let's take a look and we can, if not, we'll look at how I did that. Um, let's test the game and fight the boss and scroll on to victory. Uh, 
All right, shoot these monsters. Shoot that guy, and now my boss. Okay, I have a feeling that my setting didn't save here, so I go to screen info, and it did not. So I have to make sure that I unlock the scrolling, and again, it just didn't save. So um, make sure that you click on some other thing, and if it didn't save, check it again. There we go. Let's try that one more time. We're working on a solution for that with a with a OK and save type button. If you've ever used Game Maker, something comparable to what they use, um, that makes sure that it, it checks all that. We just didn't quite implement it yet for this version. Um, so now the screen has stopped scrolling, and that guy shoots at me, and I need to get oh, I need to get close enough to him in order to shoot him. I'm just gonna barrel right in, and. He dies, and I move on to the next screen. So that's a really sort of quick and dirty look at how we could make a simple scroller. Um, I think it's a really cool start to, to making a fun game. I know it's not as busy as a lot of scrollers. Um, you could really mess with the AI and make them do cool things, even with what's already here. You can make them start moving and then you know, turn to move down or turn to move right. You could make them shoot at you. You can make them shoot forward. You, know, you could make turrets that shoot at you and you know, make a maze that you sort of have to navigate through uh, with your graphics. And it, it could actually be a lot of fun. You could not just limit this to shooters. This could be a racing game. You could be on a snowmobile and you could just change the graphics so that this is all forest and you're in the snow here and you know you have to dodge obstacles and, and whatnot. So we can take this idea and do a lot with it. Uh, but again, if you are looking to really make a shooter game, you'd have to probably get in and gut a lot of the unnecessary code to speed up the thing because this auto scrolling takes a lot of resources and slows the game down. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait till we start getting into the intermediate tutorials so that you can, you know, Learn how to take these engines and start tweaking them and manipulating them to make your dream games for the Nintendo Entertainment System.